This is a tribute to Malaysia Airlines Flight 17. Perhaps we should move on now. While we're just looking at pictures of this press conference, let's talk to my colleague Lucas de Jong, who's sitting with me here in the studio. He's been uh, monitoring a lot of the activity on social media. As you can imagine, there was a lot of traffic, Facebook, Twitter, Lucas, in the last 24 hours. Can you give us a flavour of what sort of things people have been saying? I know there have been things out there, a lot of inappropriate pictures people have been posting. That, talk that to us actually, about the sentiment. Tell us. That has been a real uh, issue and talking point recently. Of course, there was a lot of people on the scene very quickly afterwards, and, and even here at the BBC, we've used that coverage of people's phones, of pictures that have been taken from the scene. But of course, online, through social media, Twitter and Facebook, you can't censor those images like we've decided to show only specific images that are deemed appropriate for the situation, appropriate for the family. There's been a lot of pictures that have been shared out there. Of course, 200 bodies in this field, uh, more than 200 bodies, a lot of very graphic pictures. So there's actually a side discussion coming out of this around what pictures are appropriate to even share online, a domain that's normally been sort of quite open to sharing whatever's out there. I mean, we're just looking at some pictures now, Lucas. I mean, these are pictures of the wreckage, the crash site in eastern Ukraine. This is pretty awful to look at, but some of the stuff that we're not showing that you've probably seen on social media is much, much worse. Isn't Absolutely, it? and we're talking uncensored, we're talking, you know, bodies that have been found throughout this wreckage site. Um, and I think it's a lot of responsibility that, you know, the BBC itself, we take responsibility on the images that we show when covering the story, but there's not that same accountability for a lot of individuals when it comes to sharing tweets or Facebook messages that are out there. So it's, it's created quite a discussion around that, especially, you know, around the MH17. The crash itself, 1.6 million tweets over the past 24 hours. So that's, that's constantly growing as we see more press conferences, more information coming out. And the areas that that's really focused on are the areas where there were passengers on board from. So we're seeing massive traffic coming out of Malaysia, Indonesia, as well as down and around Australia and New Zealand where there was one passenger over to the US and the UK as well. So it's a very geographically based sort of trends that we're seeing via that hashtag. And Malaysia Airlines also making use of social media in this yeah, disaster. Yeah, last time a plane went missing with Malaysia Airlines, of course, there was a lot of criticism around it, around how they sort of handled their communication. This time, they were straight on and very active via Twitter. In fact, so much to the point that one of the first confirmations that the BBC had that there was an issue around this plane was a tweet that the Malaysian Airlines Twitter account sent out. And that was very simple. They said that Malaysian Airlines has lost contact with MH17 from Amsterdam. Amsterdam, more info to come. That was retweeted about 70,000 times over the hours to come. And since then, Malaysia Airlines has been very vocal on Twitter, updating its Twitter account almost hourly into the fact that it's been giving up-to-date information about individuals, about passenger logs, and about information that is going to be released. And is there an issue, I mean, you touched on this earlier, but an issue of kind of censorship of images. I mean, are people on social media actually saying, look, we shouldn't be 
sharing this stuff because it's too gruesome. Is yeah, there an element of that? Are they censoring themselves? I mean, each individual social media user sort of answers for themselves, I guess, in a way. There's been a lot of attitude for people, you know, almost attacking those that have been sharing these images, saying that this isn't a responsible thing to do, this is not sensitive to the families. Uh, but each person's sort of been making that decision on themselves. And, you know, when we say censorship, we can't say that Twitter or Facebook is going to be able to censor any of those specific images themselves, but it is something that is definitely causing a lot of conversation. Okay, Lucas de Jong, for the moment, keeping across that trending story for us. Well, the main hashtags, what, MH17? Hashtag MH17 is one of the main ones that's definitely been used. There have been a few other ones as well, ones like hashtag pray for MH17 is also trending quite heavily around the world as well. But uh, even on Facebook, Facebook's been an amazing tool to sort of see, you know, condolences pages coming up for these individuals that have been lost. May the Lord rest their souls.